All right, we're live on Facebook. You know, I love this new technology. Jimmy, um, can you believe it? You know, you and I are about the same age, I think, right? And, I mean, way back when, we could talk to each other on the phone sometimes. Now, all of a sudden, we can see each other. Absolutely. I love this much better than talking on the telephone. It sure is. It's a lot more fun. It's nice seeing your face again. You know, folks, hey, um, this is Facebook Live. Give us the thumbs up. Give us the big old smiley face. Give us the little heart symbol. You know, I got my friend Katie down in Australia, and I've got Jimmy. You're out in Massachusetts, right? I'm up in Massachusetts, yes. There you go. Um, Ooh, Massachusetts. Yeah, you know, I, that's a hard word for me to say because I'm from North Dakota, Massachusetts. <laughs> but, you know, so, uh, so Jimmy, uh, I know you're at a family reunion, and I appreciate you taking the time to, to – uh, uh, or a class reunion, right? Or is it a family reunion? Yeah, it's Seven Hill uh, area, the area my wife grew up in. So it's their uh, reunion for the whole area of Seven Hill. Okay. Which is by Boston. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking time. So I'm going to just – you know, folks, I'm going to dive right into this thing and uh, – because I know Jimmy's got to get back to the festivities that they have going on there. You know, Jim, when you first got started, I mean, it was a life and death situation, wasn't it? It, it sure was. Um, my weight was almost pushing 500 pounds, uh, 485 pounds to be exact. My doctor had no way of uh, getting my weight under control. She basically said, um, you need to get gastric bypass surgery. Uh, if you don't, you may not see your 60th birthday. Uh, that was in April of 2000. That was six years ago, 2012. Um, in October is when I started using the, the products, the Sizzling products with uh, Ray Hutchison's help as my mentor. Um, and I started, so officially October 1st is when I started losing the weight. And um, the first 90 days, I lost 85 pounds. Wow. Um, October, November, December. And uh, when I walked in in January, uh, my doctor basically said, whatever the heck you're doing, keep doing what you're doing, and you won't have to have the surgery. And the reason why they initially they pushed out the surgery date because I broke my foot. I broke my foot at Fenway Park, and uh, I had a date in October, but they, they moved out to January. So... When I went back in in January, the doctor said, whatever you're doing, just uh, keep doing it. And if you keep losing the weight, no surgery. Um, down 312 pounds total as of last Saturday. Yesterday was pretty good. So I don't think I put on too much weight from yesterday's uh, Thanksgiving uh, festivities. But um, it, it's a lifestyle change. And, yeah. and my doctor was right. If I did not stop losing weight, I would not have seen my 60th birthday. I turned 65 in March. So um, if, if not for that wake-up call, I would not be doing this testimonial today. Wow. Wow. So you had the wake-up call, and then you broke your foot, which delayed the surgery. And um, so thank God you broke your foot. Absolutely. And, and it was a, the seventh inning stretch at Fenway. I just stood up, and the fifth metacostal on my left foot snapped. Uh, I didn't know it was broken. It hurt like heck. Uh, the next morning was when I went up to the hospital, and the, uh, the doctor said, oh, yeah, broken broken foot. I can't use crutches because of my uh, disability. So they put me in a full boot. That's why they moved the surgery date. And that's when um, I, I had called Ray, and I said, Ray, can you help me out? i got to lose some weight. And uh, sure enough, uh, he said, yeah, I'll help you out. Uh, started losing weight. Four days into the program, I was up a pound. And I remember Ray texting me saying, you got this kid, keep going, you're doing great. But I was up a pound. And I called him and I said, what do you mean I got this? I'm up a pound. I'm not losing any weight. And this, I could have very easily quit that day. And, and Ray said, let's give it another week. Let's take you off of some fruits. Let's see what happens. Uh, a week later, I was down 12, 12 pounds. Wow. And I said, oh, this thing's going to work. Taking a sizzling and the triangle of life at that point. Uh, the weight loss uh, lollipops that they had back then. So there weren't too many choices when I first started six years ago. And uh, I said, this thing's going to work. And I just stuck to the program and 80, 90 days later, 
the beginning of January, I was down uh, 85 pounds. Wow. And um, you said how many pounds are you down now? 312. 312. 312 in just over six years. In, in the last year, I've only lost seven pounds. So I said, I'm, now I'm saying maybe this thing doesn't work. But right. <laughs> my, my, my doctor basically said the, the amount of weight I've lost is more yeah. than if I had the gastric bypass surgery. Yeah. I've lost a higher percentage. And, um, and he said anything I lose from this point on is a bonus. Right. And, and I still want to drop it to 20 pounds. How do you feel? I feel great. I absolutely feel great. Um, my Six years ago, I couldn't walk across the street. Now I might do seven miles of walking uh, a day. Not today because it was like 12 degrees out there today. So I took today off. But I'm, I'm, I'm walking seven miles a day. I do Zumba classes twice a week. I do spinning classes on Saturdays. And I'm doing things that I, I was doing when I was back in 25, 30 years old. Uh, which I would never have been able to do if the, the weight never came off. Wow. Jimmy, you know, and, 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 oh, go ahead, Katie. Yeah. Jimmy, can I ask you a question? That moment in time, if you take your mind back and you, you go back to that moment where it was the turning point for you where you just thought, I'm going to do this, where, where was that switch for you and what was that thought that you had in your head or the thoughts that led up to it to actually get you to switch and go, okay, I'm really going to give this a real good go? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Katie. Uh, I think the fact that the doctor basically said I may not see my 60th birthday. Right. And my, my dad died at age at age 54 of a massive coronary heart, heart attack. Uh, everybody on his side of the family, uh, aunts and uncles, all had heart problems. All died between 45 and 62 in that age group. Um, and I thought that 60 is too young. I want to be around. Um, you know, I didn't want to leave my wife uh, widowed. Uh, um, so uh, it was the doctor basically saying, you either have the surgery or you're not going to make it. And uh, if I didn't break the foot, I would have had the surgery. And, and uh, the fact that I started using the essential products and with raised health, uh, I never had the surgery. And and, and and now it's a lifestyle. It's not. It's never. It has never been a diet. It's always been a lifestyle change. And uh, that's the biggest key. Uh, if you if you're gonna try to lose weight and you have weight to lose, don't think of it of as, as a diet. Uh, I've never cut out any food. I'm in the ice cream business. Make homemade ice cream. Uh, and I still eat ice cream. Uh, they have some desserts here. I'll, I'll grab a dessert. I had a, a dessert last night. But instead of eating, like last night, I could have eaten three or four slices of pie. Yeah. And yesterday I had a small slice of a pumpkin pie. You know, I didn't have ice cream, even though I brought the ice cream. You know, because it's Saturday mornings that I have my ice cream. So I've never cut on anything. And, and it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle change. Yeah. And that's key for anybody if they want to lose weight. Yeah. They've got to take that type of, of approach. Because it's maintainable, right? That's the difference between you now being able to maintain it versus not maintaining it. Yeah, exactly. When people go on diets, they'll lose the weight. They'll go back to their old habits. They put their weight back on plus more. Um, I still, I never broke my bad habits. I just modified them. Right. And by doing that, I'm able to eat the, the same foods that I ate before but just in moderation and not seven days a week, maybe once a month, you know, and it's little, little tricks like that, um, that, that keeps the weight off. Yeah. Cause you can maintain it. And, and you talked about the exercise. You were just saying you go for, you do quite a number of miles and you do your walks every day. What's the motivating factor there? Can you t talk to us a bit about that? Like what motivates you and what do you enjoy about that? Well, when I first started, I could barely make it past my neighbor's house. Right. And I do on a, on a hill and I remember uh, walking out to the hill and saying to my wife do I walk up the hill or do I walk down the hill? Figuring down the hill would be easier Yeah. but common sense would be okay let me roll, go up the hill when I get tired I'll just lie down in the street roll back down and hopefully not pass my driveway <laughs> um, it took me two weeks to, to go literally three houses 
Uh, up the hill. Um, now I'm, I enjoy to walk. It's um, it's relaxing. It's um, it's an hour of my time that I can have to myself, plan what I want to do for the week, and and I just thoroughly enjoy walking. Um, that's my motivating factor right now. Is that I enjoy it and it's relaxing, and it's my hour. Nobody's going to disturb me, and I can go at my own pace, you know, and and, and accomplish what I want to accomplish. Okay, so now, so I'm hearing lots of words that it's actually a lot more than exercise. I'm hearing, you know, it's your time, it's relaxing and things like that. So having that perspective and um, thinking and feeling about it as a different way to going, oh, it's just exercise. That's what actually sounds to me. And, and I also get the same feeling from when I do exercise is that's how you're able to maintain it, is that, you know, it's your hour, it's your relaxing time. Is that, is that would you agree with that? Exactly. Exactly. Even even Zumba. When I started Zumba, uh, I was going the wrong direction. Uh, mm-hmm. There was my friend Joe and I were the only two guys in the class. Uh, Forty five other young ladies, and the <laughs> two of us were smack in the middle of the class, and we were bumping into each other, and we were saying, "No, we're not going to do this." Uh, that was four years ago, and, and we're still going strong, and we love it. And and now it's it's like dancing. It's it's a pleasure to go to the sober. It's not a workout. It's not an exercise. Uh, I look forward to it twice a week. Fantastic. Great. Hey, Jim. Jim, you know, your wife's lost weight too, right? She has lost 80 pounds. She has kept it off. She lost 39 pounds her first 90 days. Uh, she has lost 80 pounds. The doctor is very happy with her weight where it is right now. And she's maintained it for the last five and a half years, almost six, or more six, more than six years now. Wow! But uh, thirty-nine pounds the first ninety days. So four hundred pounds between the two of you. Uh, yeah, could you believe that? Crazy. That's like two, Crazy. that's like yeah. more than two of me right now. Wow, that's cool. That's Good cool. Work. Well, congratulations, you know, Jim. Um, Katie, do you have any other questions? we got to let Jim get back to his uh, family yeah, reunion. No, I won't hold him up any longer, but I really want to thank you for um, taking the time to join us today. And I'm sure that others who are watching this, either on the recording or live, will get some inspiration and motivation from you that, you know, that they can do it too and that um, they shouldn't give up and they should keep trying. Uh, I, I, thanks, Katie. I appreciate it. Let me add one more thing, uh, Kurt. Okay. Uh, when I started, I was on a ton of medicine. Uh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, a medicine for my heart, um, and a number of other medicines. Uh, I was diabetic. And as the weight come down, my doctor was so pleased with my result, my blood results that she decided to take me off some medicines. And, and I've been off the medicines now for more than three years. Wow. Uh, another all, benefit. All, all the medicine? Say again, Kurt? All the medicine? All the medicine. I'm not taking any medicine. And and that was my doctor deciding to do that uh, based on my blood work as as I lost weight. Wow, that's fantastic, Jimmy. Right. That's yeah. fantastic. So it's it's been it's been a journey of health for you. I love it. Yeah, it's it's now a journey of both not only health, but it's also wellness. So it's both um the, the wellness on doing activities in, in the health of eating healthy foods. And, and like I said, I've never cut out anything. It, it's just doing it in moderation and it's not doing it seven days a week. Yeah. So does Anne Marie come and uh, make sure at the Zumba classes that you're not hitting on those other 40 women? Uh, she, gets <laughs> outside. she takes the videotapes of me not knowing that she's videotaping me. And, and then she, she throws it on uh, Facebook every so often. I'll have her throw one on uh, just to show you guys when I was up on stage doing one of the Zumba moves. Well, that'd be cool. Pretty good. I'll throw it on the uh, on the site. I like that. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Well, we'll let you get going, Jimmy. Thanks for taking time out. So, uh, give Anne Marie a big hug and happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Thank you, Kurt. Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas to everybody. And I'll be talking to you guys later. All right. Thanks, Jim. Bye now. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.
All right. But, Katie, what do you think of that? What a great story. How inspirational is that? Right? 85 pounds in 90 days. You know what? I, I, I think when people think, oh, it's just too hard. I'm not going to be able to do this. I mean, he started where he couldn't even walk. You know, and it was an accomplishment for him to make it one house. And but it all starts with that single step, doesn't it? And that and that persistence to keep going because that one house can turn into two houses and three houses, and and it really does require just that consistency and just not giving up. I mean, what a great story! I don't think about it, it makes me want to cry. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. and he had a broken foot in those first ninety days. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can you yeah. imagine, you know, you're, you're almost 500 pounds, you got a broken foot, and the doctors are basically um, saying that, uh, they're basically saying, look, if you don't do this, you're going to be dead. Yeah. What kind of cool. motivation? Wow. So, and it was really interesting to hear how he talked about his diet, too, that he hasn't, like, cut out all the foods that he loves. He's just now eating them in moderation and adding in his activity to maintain what his achievement yeah i think that's a that's a thing that a lot of us need to learn that you don't have to be on some crazy you know diet and starving yourself and and uh, and all these different things i mean man he's around ice cream every day that's what he does for for a living yeah how hard would that be to lose weight right yeah it'd be pretty difficult i mean i'd be in there like well i gotta try this one right <laughs> so kurt how are you going with your Diet. So you want to share some of your uh, achievements? You've lost a bit of weight since we started this um, group. Yeah, I lost a total of, of four pounds. Um, I jumped on a scale just a little bit ago um, before I washed a little bit of hair I have, um, you know, because I was down at my mom and dad. My mom for Thanksgiving, she makes this turkey and ham and apple pie and pecan pie and pumpkin pie and and I mean, we got all these different kinds of pies, and then she's got pumpkin <laughs> bars, and then she, we, I mean, we got stuffing and mashed potato, and I mean, you, you name it, the table's just full of food, right? And, yeah. And so the average person gains five pounds between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and that's why. Yeah. And so when I got home this afternoon, I jumped on the scale right away, I gained a pound. Yeah. I gained a pound. And, and, Part of it is because I just, you know, I mean, right? Yeah. But, you know, the thing is it's not uh, it's not that one day that's going to gain all the weight. It's the continue then continuing at the next day, the day after, the day after. If you have that one day for that special occasion and then you do a reset and you get back on track, you're fine. Like, it, it, it's fine. The, the weight gain really starts to happen. It's the additional days. It's the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the continuation yeah. of that. Yeah, the whole thing is too, Katie, like, <clears throat> you know, I've changed my diet, you know, like, like Jim was saying, you know, I've changed my diet, I've modified it, I still eat the food that I like, I mean, I like bacon, I like steak, I like, you know, I mean, I, I'm a meat eater, right, unlike you, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a meat eater, and, um, and so I've modified my diet to be more of a keto, but I'm still watching the calories, so it's keto and calories at the same time, I'm watching all of that. Um, yeah. And then I, I've tried to add some exercise into it. Like today, I was out um, helping my friend go deer hunting, and, and I walked uh, I walked three miles. And, and for those of you that don't that don't know, um, just a little over ten years ago, they told me I'd never walk again. I've got a I've got a busted up leg that was really smashed up in a motorcycle wreck, and and so to walk that three miles out there deer hunting today, um, it didn't hurt. I didn't have any pain at all, and. Uh, and uh, my back didn't start to hurt because I still have a limp. I mean, I'll always have a limp because of my leg. But I, you I, walk I, with your leg, can you? and I walk through uneven ground, through hills yeah. and things like that. And uh, and and I feel great. I mean, since I switched to the keto diet and I got rid of and I wasn't a big carb eater. Like I don't eat pasta. You know, I mean, if I eat pasta, it's once a month, not very often. And I don't like, I'm not a big bread eater or anything like that. Maybe when I'm on the road a lot, I'll grab a sandwich at a, at a convenience store. But typically I'm, I'm not that. I had to cut out the potatoes. I, I, I am a potato eater. I like potatoes, but they're out the window. I threw the potatoes, you know, I got rid of that llama with my romaine lettuce. I don't eat romaine lettuce anymore. Right. 
Well, that one gang way. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I had to switch to iceberg lettuce, and I just don't think it has any taste. But, but I've noticed since I went to the more keto lifestyle, and Andrea was telling me, you know, it's, it's, she, has, she has a lot of knowledge on the keto diet. And she was saying that, that um, a lot of the regular diet that what I was probably eating, it was probably um, more of an inflammatory diet, right? right. It, it, it triggered inflammation in my body, and now that's gone. I don't. I don't feel any inflammation in my back anymore. So and I feel your pain's reduced. Your pain's yeah. reduced through changing your diet. My pain has gone down. I've seen that I can. I. I. I can. My. My endurance has gone up. Even though I haven't lost that much weight, my endurance has gone up. I notice it. Imagine how you got to feel when you. You know, as you continue to lose weight. So you've lost four pounds now. Imagine how you're going to feel when you've lost ten pounds. Right. When I lose ten. When I lose that that fifty, you know that I'm shooting for. That's what I, that's what I'm shooting for is that fifty pounds. And I just was listening to Jimmy. You know, it's got me inspired. I mean, if he can lose eighty five pounds in ninety days, that's a pound a day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And but you, I mean, you, it's it, that is relative too. So that's relative to the amount of weight he needed to lose versus how quickly he's losing it. So the more weight you have to lose, the faster you can lose it initially, and then when you start to hit get closer to your goal weight, the weight loss will slow down more. You have to work harder to drop that last bit of weight versus the beginning. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, I've always been taught that the last 10 pounds should take about two months to come off. If you take it off faster than that, chances are you'll put it back on, right? And if you take it off slower than that, chances are you'll quit. Yeah. Right? Right. So when I talk to girls like yourself that, you know, you know, you know how it is. You, you meet girls who, oh, I got to lose 10 pounds. I'm fat. I got to lose 10 pounds. And I look at them. I start kind of laughing at it. You know, it's, it's 10 pounds. But then they get upset if they don't lose that 10 pounds in three days. Oh, you can't lose it that quickly. The, the, less, the closer you are to your goal weight, the harder it is to lose the weight. And it's even harder to lose weight or body fat after you've even hit your goal weight. If somebody's doing that, and I've done it, couple times in my life for competition it really gets extremely hard because you, you're the amount of effort required is a lot more there's more restriction and more exercise and stuff because it's then now you're moving beyond the natural state that's not a place that many people go or you should go at all but um, so like with Jimmy's case you know people shouldn't be upset if they don't lose that amount of weight that quick like it's not going to happen that quick for everyone that's right that's right. And, and, you know, like he was saying, he's doing the triangle of life. He's doing the Encompass 360. He's doing the sizzling, right? Because like we've identified in the past, what people do when they, when they start thinking about weight loss, typically they are going to cut back on things and they're going to have a nutritional deficit. They're going to be yeah. missing something, right? Yeah. So why not identify that from day one and just say to yourself, I am going to have a problem, so I'm going to take these products to prevent it from turning into a real problem. Definitely. So. Yeah. The sizzle lean, it, and so that was the main product he was using, the sizzle lean and the triangle? Yeah, he was doing sizzle lean um, uh, twice a day, yeah. and the triangle of life, and, uh, and Encompass 360, yeah. I've used the sizzle lean before when I was doing my competitions, and I actually used it uh, three times a day. And I found that product to be excellent because um, it's very filling. It's got all your fiber in it, and it's got your 50 trace minerals, and the flavor tastes beautiful, like you've got the two choices of the chocolate and vanilla. And so in terms of, uh, you know, is, is real food better? Yes, of course. But if you need that meal in between or that replacement and you're in a rush, I think it's a great option because it can fill that gap. And it's just so low. It's really calorie controlled too, so you know exactly how much you're getting. So I found that product to be, and for me, it was a very effective product, and that actually helped me during my competitions. And I, I, I still use it, but I used it a lot moving up until then because I really wanted to test and see, you know, how much is it going to help me. Well, of course it works. If you follow the instructions, it works. Yeah. And what was your body fat when you were competing? How, how low did you get your body fat? Oh, it was ridiculous. It was something like 10% or something like that. Yeah. Like, that's not healthy, um, but that's what's required for a competition. But, you know, on average, it would sit about a 19 or something like that. 
Right. But it's really, but people think, oh, well, you're lucky because you know you're just naturally like that. I'm I'm not like Sandy. I listened to Sandy's story. We had her on a couple of webinars ago, and she was sharing that she could really eat whatever she wants, and she would never gain weight. And it was only in recent years that that started to change a bit. But for me, it's never been like that. I could I could gain weight very quickly. Um, so I I just very conscious about what I'm putting in my body. And for me, it's not about being overweight or underweight. It's about health, so I make the choices initially for health, and the and the weight side of it is an added bonus. And I also keep that check. And like we had that conversation the other week, Kurt, about um, you know don't let it get out of control. Don't wait till like it's out of control and you have to work harder. If, if you notice that one extra notch on your belt getting a bit tighter, now's the, now's the signal to you know kind of rein it in a bit and step up your effort. Be more conscious about what you're eating so you can get it under control. It's a lot easier to lose a few, a couple of kilos, three, four kilos, than it is, you know, a lot more weight, isn't it? Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. I wish, I wish I would have been thinking about that, you know, um, you know, eighty pounds ago. Yeah, but you shouldn't beat yourself up about it. Now that you know, when you get to your goal, you'll then be aware, and that'll that'll kick in, and you will will stop you from getting to that point again. Yeah. And if you do, you do. You don't beat yourself up. You just jump back on. Yeah, that's exactly it, you know, and, and I had my genetics test, and I think you have too, and when you have your genetics test, you find out that, you know, your heritage, your background, I know your background, you've got some um, Irish heritage in you, right? Yeah, English and Irish. Yeah, and being Irish, they know that, that the Irish people, just like the Northern uh, European people like myself, that we have uh, what's called a thrifty genotype, okay. and what, what that okay. means... What that means is at some point in time, your family went through a great famine. Right. Okay. Yeah. And the people that, that had the thrifty genotype, what that really means is that um, their body could store fat. It could store food as energy. And yeah. the, peop the people in your family that didn't have that, right, your skinny relatives, yeah, they died. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right? They starve to death because they couldn't survive with a little bit of food. So what happens in today's world where we have lots of food, there's food everywhere. I mean, there's definitely not a food shortage. There shouldn't, there shouldn't be a food shortage anywhere on the planet right now, right? Well, there, yeah, in some countries. But there shouldn't be. We have enough no, food to go around. I mean, the food that we threw away yesterday here in the United States on Thanksgiving Day could have fed the world. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. Right? And. Yeah. And, you know, but when we put our genetics, your genetics, and my genetics into a world of lots of food, we get fat, right? Mm -hmm. We're waiting for the next great famine to come around. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. Uh, and when that happens, I'm ready. You're not. I am. <laughs> yeah, <I'm ready>. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> I always got to look at the positive side of that. Yeah, right? that's good. So, um, <laughs> so I guess we'll... We'll wrap up in a minute, but um, and you can share any last thoughts with us. But um, next week, I wanted to share some. Uh, hopefully, we can get someone else on next week. So, if you're watching this replay or you're on the call now, if you've got a fitness goal, if you've got a weight loss goal, if you've even just started on your journey or you're thinking about starting on your journey, please jump on our webinar. Share your thoughts, your feelings, because. It could be like one or two things that you say that inspire someone else to go take some action and change their life. And, and really that's why we started this group is to try and share some information that's going to help people to inspire them and just to make their lives better. So if you, if you are on a journey and you're thinking about studying, um, put your hands up, get in touch with us and so that you can join our webinar and share your story because everybody loves to hear a good story. Um, so I invite you... If you are thinking about it, please do. Have you got any other comments you want to make, Kurt? No, I just want to, you know, thank you for putting this together. What a great idea. And, you know, it's not about trying to sell products. It's not about trying to do anything else besides just share information. I love it. Thank you. All right. Well, everyone, have a great weekend. Thanks for joining the webinar. We'll see you next time. Give us the thumbs up, you know, the old smiley face. Share this with people. Let people know that we're doing this because it, it, it really, that's how we get the word out there. And, and um, you know, and, and that's important. That's important. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.